want to invest in a game and play a game, the first trading card game ever, in my opinion, is still the best trading card game ever, no matter how many flaws you want to try and find in it. Hey guys, and welcome back to the second and final part of why I hate Yu-Gi-Oh! And today, I really want to concentrate on players, the ban lists, cheating and unsportsmanlike conduct that is rampant in Yu-Gi-Oh! And how Konami deals with it. First off, let's look at the sheer difference on the Konami suspended players list and the Wizards ban list. And I have to say, there is a distinct difference in these lists. Although majority of Wizards of the Coast ban lists aren't banned for life, there are banned timeframes that are life. And in a couple cases, it just does say lifetime. Konami, on the other hand, doesn't give lifetime bans. Right now, the longest ban on Konami's list is to 2024, so it would seem that they have a maximum ban of 10 years no matter what a player has done. Wizards of the Coast has a number of 186 players on their list, and Konami, there is over a whopping 550 people on their banned list. I had to manually count the Konami ones, so there is a couple uh, off. It could be 540, it could be 560. The general number is 550. One might think that that means Konami is more diligent about catching cheaters and people that cause toxic atmospheres and harass and whatnot, but actually this could be further from the truth. And as I stated in my last video, Konami lets their top tier players simply get away with anything so that they can have faces for the game equivalent to pro tour players in Magic. Though they do not often implement any new rules or directives towards local game stores to try and curb these activities. In a sense, you could say Konami is silent when it comes to these issues. And unlike Wizards of the Coast, people who might disagree or agree with the actions they take, they're still taking action that Konami doesn't. Yu-Gi-Oh! as a game has a much smaller install base than Magic as well, probably a significantly smaller player base, but yet their list is more than twice as long as Magic's. It's simply because there's far more toxicity and far more cheating in Yu-Gi-Oh! than Magic. Hard to believe, I know it, but it's true, unfortunately. Just look at the numbers. Yu-Gi-Oh! players have gone so far as to teach cheating that even Reddit documents are dedicated to showing players how to cheat. It says they're only educating players on how to catch cheaters, but yet they lay out every form of cheating that they know of and claims that they've done it themselves. Looking at this, there's a different variety that Wizards ban people for. Two of the major ones are harassment and cheating, but if we take a look at Konami's list, it's overwhelmingly unsportsmanlike conduct and cheating. On their list, unsportsmanlike conduct, cheating is cheating in-game, and unsportsman severe refers to someone doing something akin to harassment or, say, flipping a table or pissing someone off practically. What this list shows is the sheer amount of player-to-player -player harassment that happens. It's not centered around one group of people or players or even women or males. It's everyone harassing everyone. This can happen in any game community, I will say that, but it's completely rampant in Yu-Gi-Oh, which is similar to online gaming communities such as Dota 2 or League of Legends, which are also considered two of the worst and most toxic online gaming communities. I myself, like I said in the last video, have experienced this and just about everyone I've ever played with has experienced this. It's behavior that's not only let go many times by Konami, but the local game stores. Because there are so few LGSs now that run Yu-Gi-Oh! that the LGSs are afraid to kick out more popular players that might be engaging these activities as those players always seem to have such an influence on the local community in such a way that they can literally affect the local game store's business. I mean, if 40% of the local game store's business is Yu-Gi-Oh! The owner of the LGS is definitely not going to kick them out because then they're going to lose that 40% of sales. So overall, the demographics of players that are in Yu-Gi-Oh! does overlap. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a majority 17 to 25 year olds playing competitively. That is also the largest demographic in Magic. But Magic does have demographically older players that you'll never find at a Yu-Gi-Oh! event. It is kind of common to find people 40, 50, I mean even 60 in an LGS or at a GP playing Magic. There is a possibility that it could be that there's higher diversity in ages. Does also help balance some toxicity out of the game. And as to card sharking, it's in every gaming community. 
trading card games. But in my experience in Magic the Gathering, parents usually come with their children to tournaments and in Yu-Gi-Oh! parents don't stay with their children. It seems that parents of Yu-Gi-Oh! players consider local game stores daycares, where parents that come in and bring their children in Magic are there to play with them. I'm sure this is not always the case, honestly, but through my experiences of working and gaming in both of these communities, there seems to be something that is commonly different with the games. I mean, like I said, everywhere is different. Some places Yu-Gi-Oh! is huge, some places Yu-Gi-Oh! is small. The communities are always different, age groups are different, but this is just my general experience. In conclusion, I really hate being negative towards any gaming community, but Yu-Gi-Oh! out of all of the card games has to be the worst and most unwelcoming community. It's really hard to know how many active players, competitive and casual, there are for Yu-Gi-Oh! currently in 2018 as well. My guess would be, and this is just a guess, don't get mad, based upon what I see for sales, 2 million players, and possible with another million who play casual and buy older cards that don't keep up with new formats. I believe that Yu-Gi-Oh! times as a live game have to be limited. I'm not saying it's going out this year or the next few years, but within the next decade, this game will die, and my thinking is sooner rather than later. Magic, on the other hand, I believe can continue much further and much longer due to the pedigree of the game being much stronger. Magic is backed by not only new and young players and a far more successful company, I mean, even though some people don't believe that, but also older collectors who view magic not just as a game, but art. A lot of these collectors have money. Can these collectors ultimately save the game even if Wizards continues to make set mistake after set mistake? No, eventually there will have to be an end, but I believe Wizards of the Coast would have to make so many mistakes year after year for this to happen is unlikely. So if you want to invest in a game, play a game. The first trading card game ever, in my opinion, is still the best trading card game ever. No matter how many flaws you want to try and find in it. For now, this is all I really have to say about the negative nature of Yu-Gi-Oh! and I'm sure things from time to time will pop up, but until then, I hope you take my opinion to heart, and if everyone has a different take on Yu-Gi-Oh!, I would love to hear what you have to say. Like I said, these are just my interpretations, and if you have a different interpretation of Yu-Gi-Oh!, let me know. I'm always open to listening to people's feedback and opinions and experiences in Yu-Gi-Oh!, since I've talked to a lot of people and people that I used to play with, and everyone's experience is kind of different, so please comment it down below. Thank you so so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if you enjoyed and want to watch more of my content. If you want to support me and what I do here on YouTube, ways such as my Patreon are linked in the descriptions of every video I make. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to you guys again really soon.